In the words of Republican presidential candidate John McCain, F you. That was him speaking to Senator John Cornyn, nothing personal. Senator Chuck Grassley was an effing jerk. Senator Pete Domenici, a hole of some sort. In our third story tonight, McCain, the button and the temper that led Domenici as a Republican to say, I decided I didn't want this guy anywhere near a trigger. Republican Senator Thad Cochran said, the thought of his being president sends a cold chill down my spine. He loses his temper and he worries me. McCain's temper is well known, but now it's not just senators expressing concern about him. According to Salon.com, it's the military. Major General Paul Eaton telling Salon, quote, I'm a little worried about his knee-jerk response factor. I think it is a little scary. Eaton now campaigning for Clinton. Former Republican and former Air Force Chief of Staff General Merrill McPeak, quote, McCain has got a reputation for being a little volatile. McPeak, now an Obama man. Major General Scott Gration, quote, I have tremendous respect for John McCain, but I would not follow him. Another former Republican, another former Obama, or current Obama man. And proving once again that timing is everything. Today, McCain seemed to have trouble keeping his cool in public. Why? A major crisis? Something at 3 a.m.? No, a reporter who asked about his claim in 2004 that he had never discussed the vice presidency with John Kerry. Everybody knows I had a conversation. Everybody knows that, that I had a conversation. There's no living American in Washington that knows it. There's no one. And you know it, too. So, no, you know it. You know it. So I don't know, even know why you asked. Why Oh, you do know it. I know I just I don't know what you meant, read, or heard of, and I don't know the circumstances. Maybe in May of 04, I hadn't had a conversation. I don't know that it's well known that I had the conversation. It was absolutely well known by everyone. So do you have a question on another issue? Well, can I ask you when the conversation no, was? No, because it's, it, the issue is close as far as I'm concerned. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it in America. So. In point of fact, Senator McCain said in May 2004 that he had never talked to Kerry about being his vice president, at least to that point. Let's uh, bring in the reporter who wrote the Salon piece about McCain and the military, national correspondent Mark Benjamin. Mr. Benjamin, much thanks for your time tonight. Thanks for having me, Keith. The retired military men that you spoke with, are they conceivably aberrations, or is the uh, concern among America's military leadership about McCain at the helm widespread? I don't think they're aberrations, Keith. You know, it's funny, I went into this story expecting to write about Obama and Clinton. I, you know, I, there's a spat going on among those two about who's the better commander-in-chief. So I turn this thing in, and I have an editor who says, well, you really need something about McCain in here. And I, I thought it was sort of a no-brainer. I, I sort of assumed that support for McCain in the military would be, you know, absolute. I also assumed that, you know, this stuff about him being a hothead was probably over, overplayed. I was wrong on, on both counts, I have to say. I was really surprised how easy it was to find very smart, very accomplished Republican you know, folks who work in the Pentagon or have worked in the Pentagon who have had run-ins with John McCain that, that, that scared them. And when I say scared them, they felt like, you know, regardless of what you see on that TV screen on the airplane, that he, that he sometimes really, really loses control of himself. The, uh, the former aide to Secretary of State Colin Powell, Colonel Larry Wilkerson, had told The Nation magazine that McCain is hard-headed, arrogant, hubristic, and proud, and entertains no dissent. It's reminding me of somebody. It's reminding me of somebody, especially on these topics of the military, Iraq, uh, homeland security. Is it, is it four more years of the last seven? Well, there are some similarities, if not so much in temper, but there's, there's, a re there's also a real concern that the change that needs to be made, a lot of military people think, is that we need to start thinking about projecting American interest in ways other, way other than using military power. In other words, this soft power approach. You know, the war needs to be fought by the USAID, you know, international development and the State Department and economic policy, and not just go, you know, reach, go for the military every time. The concern is that John McCain is more oriented that way. I mean, certainly on the floor of the Senate in October 2002, when we were about to go to war in Iraq, you know, we predicted it was going to be a glorious chapter in the history of the United States. Um, he was wrong. Uh, he's been courting, he's been winning support, advice from a lot of real hardliners about Iran, including some people who openly advocate attacking it preemptively. He says he's skeptical about the NIE saying Iran had dropped its weapons program. When the nation asked McCain's uh, top foreign policy advisor why McCain would keep troops in Iraq as long as he talked about 100 years or whatever it is, he said, quote, Iraq might be stable, but what about the region? McCain himself said, quote, there's going to be other wars. 
Is temper perhaps less an issue ultimately to these military men than this military interventionist attitude? I think both are, Keith. I mean, it, you know, when you talk to these folks who have been, you know, in the Pentagon for years and years and years, you, you have to understand it's not on the anger thing. It's not just that he gets angry. I mean, I interviewed people who like John McCain. They respect John McCain, and they've been yelled at by, you know, a lot of different senators. What they were saying was different. They said this guy really loses his mind sometimes to the point where he should not have his finger on the button. That's what I found. Well, you know, that's irrational sounding, not angry sounding. Uh, Mark Benjamin, the national correspondent for Salon.com. Uh, great insight. Great thanks for your time, sir. Thank you, sir.